In an earlier tutorial, we have discussed how to create instances through geometry nodes. Today we will learn how to add some random materials to these instances created through GeoNodes, and we'll discuss two different methods for the same. So if you create instances through geometry nodes, your node setup will be somewhat like this, and you'll probably use a node called instances on points. If we enable this node, we will get these sphere instances, created from this primitive object. And our target is to add some random color materials for these instances, so we need to store some information about these instances, in a custom attribute. Let's add a store named attribute node, before the realize instances node. Since we want to store some data about each of the instances, we need to change this domain field, to instance. And then this value field will control, what information we want to store for a particular instance. We can store anything, for example, we can connect it to a node called, index. It will then store the index of each of the instances, in this custom attribute. And we need to give it some name as well, so we'll call it unique ID or UID, or anything else you may like. Let's turn on the rendered view mode. We need to assign a material after the realize instances node. The most common way to do that, is to add a set material node right here. And we'll then select a material from this material list, which is already attached to the base object. We can rename it to say random color, because it will produce a random color for each instance. Currently this is only a white material, we have to modify it to get a random color based on this attribute, so we need to now switch over to the shader editor. We have just a principled BSDF, and a material output node. First, we need to add a node called, white noise texture. Then we also need to add an attribute node, to bring the custom attribute that we have stored. Here you have to type the same name, that we have used in our geometry node. Then we can either use this vector or this FAC output, and connect it to the vector input of this noise texture. And then connect this color output to the base color of our main shader. You'll immediately see that a random color is applied to each of the instances. But since we are using this attribute for a vector input, it is better to store an actual vector in our custom attribute, or the UID. So back to the geometry node, we can remove this index node, and instead, use the position of each of these instances, because that is also unique. We have to change this type to vector. And then we'll just connect this to a node, called position node. This will give us a far better result with more variations. But instead of these random colors of a single material, Let's say you have added a list of different materials, and you want Blender to pick a material at random, for each of the instances here. In that case, we cannot use a set material node, we have to assign the material dynamically, using a set material index node. It helps us to pick any particular material, based on this index value. But if you change this, you'll discover that no change is happening to the material. That is because these materials are added for our base object. But these instances are separate, they are created just from this primitive icosphere. So these materials won't be available for its instances. If we still want to access these materials from this primitive object, we need to make some changes to this node tree. First we have to use a set ID node, and set some unique number to distinguish the input geometry from the rest. Then we have to join this input geometry with the instances, and then delete it, based on the same ID number. Now if we change the material index, the material will change accordingly. Or, we can simply get rid of this primitive object, and instead, use a similar icosphere, for which we have already added the same list of materials here. Let us bring it to our node tree, using an object info node, and then use this as the instancing object. To rectify the size, we should use the relative option. And we can simply hide this object from the viewport. Now if we change this number in the material index node, we'll observe a parallel change in the material here. Since we want to randomize this, we need to connect it to a random value node. We have got total 10 materials in this list, so this value will range from 0 to 9. And we need to plug in this attribute value to this ID socket, so that the random value is grouped by the instances. So we need an attribute node, and it should have the same name, which is UID the one that we have used while storing this attribute. But we cannot use a position node here, we have to revert back to the previous option, which is the index node. And we'll get a random material for these instances, picked up from this list. But since this index is always an integer, it is better to use an integer data type for these nodes. 
So this way, we can assign a random material for the instances, created through geometry nodes, and it's very easy. We have used both of these techniques together, in this demo video, so that we can get even more variations in the materials. So I hope you like this quick tutorial. You can join this channel to access our original blend files and additional perks. Thanks for watching.